Sim Racing is here. Very soon, the most talented drivers will compete on the same grid for the ultimate prize. But what if I told you being fast is simply not enough anymore? In the past few years, margins have only grown tighter and tighter. Just a couple of hundreds could mean the difference between starting P1 and P8. This is why every team on track has a full roster of engineers to support their drivers on and off track. But what is it that they do exactly? To learn more, I reached out to an engineer from the Aston Martin Aramco esports team, François-Xavier Mergin, a very good friend of mine. He has worked closely with very talented drivers such as Fabrizio De Nozo, Otis Lawrence, and Duncan Hofland. And he's going to help me shed some light on the topic. Stay tuned! First of all, an engineer's most important task is to collect and analyze data. Some of them specialize in race strategy, racecraft, setup, performance, and others, race engineering. From the data, they develop new strategies to improve the team's performance. But to do that, they need data. Lots and lots of data. Engineers and drivers alike work close to 10 to 12 hours a day, every day. This is also why a lot of your esports content creators are a little quieter in the months leading up to the competition. On most days, engineers organize and supervise on-track training sessions. These sessions, conducted either in solo or in groups, focus on three key areas. Baseline setup building for tracks that drivers have yet to drive on, qualifying simulation to further refine setups or to hone a driver's pace, and race simulation to further build consistency. During these sessions, engineers supervise drivers, set specific objectives, and explain the data being collected, which is super beneficial to younger or less experienced drivers. While the driver is out on track, engineers collect data from three primary sources. Number one, driver data. A lot of times, consistency, brake and throttle inputs, and the racing lines. This type of data also includes stress management, focus levels, positioning in the cockpit, which could have an impact on performance. Number two, car data. Just like what teams do in real life, anything from the top speed of the car to the suspension behavior is recorded. This includes, but does not limit to, slip ratio, slip angles, right height, and also tire degradation. Nothing escapes the eyes of an engineer because any edge they can find on the competition is an edge that they will take. Number three, external data. Lastly, engineers also record anything external that might prove useful. This includes pit stop times for overcut and undercut opportunities, car behavior in dirty air, the best opportunities for attack or defense on the track, and the impact of weather conditions on setup and driver handling. Once the data is all in place, it is time for analysis. There are three main ways to look at this data. First, we look at a driver's verbal and non-verbal communication to deduce any signs of fatigue or focus loss. Combined with mechanical knowledge, the engineer can identify issues with the car setup or the source of performance loss. Treating data of this kind requires strong interpersonal skills and solid mechanical and physical expertise. Together with the drivers, the team reviews onboard footage before and after the session. And honestly, that is probably the best way to improve at F120. And this is something that I talked about in my previous video, so definitely go check it out. Combine onboard footage and telemetry, and an engineer can tell you exactly what you're doing wrong. There's quite a few tools at their disposition. But before we start, let's get RaceNet out of the way already, because esports drivers don't train in time trial. Let's start with the least complex application and move our way up. Team Telemetry is the most accessible app to the public. It presents the most crucial information in a very visual manner, so it is best used in race engineering. Moving up, we have Sim Racing Telemetry. But what makes it stand out the most is that you can load up any lap and have a direct one-to-one -one comparison with another driver. It is the best tool to compare and refine driving technique. Lastly, Telemetry Tool. And this is probably the most abstract tool that exists. Because the moment you load it up, it looks like you just entered the matrix. It's just a bunch of code on screen. Everything there is to know about the car is in there. And you can organize all this data into detailed tables and graphs. It is best used to create comprehensive reports following a training session. Now, contrary to what you might think, engineers also play a key role outside of racing. Yes, 
data is their expertise, but they also offer mental health support off track. Let me explain. Engineers have to carefully design and plan training sessions to target specific driver weaknesses without burning them out. This is where engineers with previous management experience comes into play. F1 sim racing is extremely competitive. You will lose 90% of the time. For that reason, engineers offer a lot of verbal motivation to the drivers. It helps drivers to manage stress. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm trying so hard to win, but I don't, I get really frustrated. Imagine the same thing for the esports drivers, but now there's a huge price pool on the line. Sometimes it is up to the engineer to help the drivers focus on what is within their control and to let go of whatever is not. Remember the last specialization? The race engineer. They act as the intermediate between the drivers and the rest of the team. Their role is to keep communications down to the most essential. This is to take away all the guesswork out of a race. And this process starts even before the driver heads out on track. Before the race, the driver and the engineer finalize their strategies. They agree on plan A, plan B, or plan C, for example. Things like the pit lap and the tire compound to use must be clear from the get-go. But most importantly, they make sure the driver is fully locked in. This is where sports and coaching backgrounds for engineers can come in handy. Through pre-race rituals like neural reflex exercises or the use of headphones and music, it brings the driver to the right level of mental readiness. During the race, the engineer relays crucial information to the driver. He keeps the driver updated on fuel info, ERS levels, and tire wear, and compares that to every other car on track. But he must do it outside of battles or corners, as to not distract the driver. For drivers with more experience, the info could be a little more raw and less processed. But for a driver with less experience, it might be helpful to be more direct. For example, if the car in front of me is running low on ERS, to the veteran, I would say he is low on battery. But to the rookie, I might say, push ERS now! For example, the last time Fabrizio and I raced around Las Vegas against Nico, I could see that Nico was running low on ERS by the end of the straight. Zero battery for Nico, if you want to ERS, it's like you want. He's at 10 now. I knew that Fabrizio would know what to do with that information, so I simply stated facts, and he jumped on it instantly. In a case of changing conditions, it is up to the race engineer to give a rough estimate. For example, in my last PSGL race around Coda, everybody pitted for enters, but I was told to wait. This strategic call is actually what made me win the race. This is because my boy Francois knew from data and from quick maths that enters just wouldn't make it to the end. Ouais, il leur reste 10 tours, ils vont faire 3 tours en zone de crevaison, les mecs là, s'ils restent sur leurs inter. This is where engineers who were past sim racers really shine. Because what better way there is to know what a driver needs than to have been in the exact same shoes yourself? Jonah Martin and Tomek Paratsis are all past sim racers who have now taken the mantle of engineering. During the race, they must also keep an eye on driver feedback. A driver's words takes precedence over what the data says because he is the one connected to the road. If the driver is struggling on his current tires and setup, then it is up to the engineer to come up with a solution to adapt the ongoing strategy. For example, this happened when I engineered Kai around Piaget Australia. I saw where he was losing time compared to the other drivers. We looked at setups and added a little more downforce. I then showed him through telemetry how he could take turn 9 and turn 10 flat. Oh, he's flying! At least, I tried to. Should an opponent go for an unorthodox strategy during the pit stop phase? Then the initial plan is bust. It now needs to be changed. It is up to the engineer to step up in these crucial moments. Sometimes, they have to make a split-second decision that will decide between victory or defeat. After the race, emotions tend to run high. It was uh, a lonely race, but I take it. For some at least. So it is best to avoid an immediate debrief. What happens is that everybody shoulders responsibility for everything that happened on track. But it is also important to look at what went well. By highlighting the strength of drivers, it helps build their inner confidence, their self-perception, which in turn leads to growth and better performance. And that about wraps it up. But there is so much going on behind the scenes that you and I don't know about yet. So the next time you watch an official F1 esports race and you see the engineers in their little booth, remember that it is a team effort. And now that you know what goes on behind the scenes, it is going to make the viewing experience so much more enjoyable. Shout out to my friend Francois-Xavier Mergin who helped me put this video together. If you like the video, subscribe so you don't miss out on videos just like this one. This is Formula Kai signing off and I'll see you very soon. 
Bye bye.